Yes, I am fully aware that the government of Turkmenistan will most likely be watching this video as they routinely scout the internet for content and especially content pertaining to their country. Yes, I am fully aware that many Turkmen people are weary of YouTubers in the past that have visited and in a way sort of exploited Turkmenistan for clickbait titles and false or misinformed portrayals of the country. I want the people of Turkmenistan to know that this is not my intention, however, I will be as honest and objective in my delivery as you will see in this video. Also, out of respect to the Turkmen people, I will try to blur out all the clear faces of the Turkmen people that I did not have permission to film. I hope everyone can enjoy. Oh, and yes, I know you guys are sick and tired of being called the North Korea of Central Asia, so I will let my subscribers and hopefully anyone else watching this to please stop saying that. So, uh... We're in Turkmenistan. Okay, here we go. Turkmenistan! Whoa! Let's go! Mm. So we'll get to Turkmenistan, but first I have to explain to you why did I even go there in the first place. So I wasn't originally planning on going to Turkmenistan. I have wanted to go for a long time, but I just didn't have any immediate plan. Well, the reason is because of this mug that you can get at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. But also, the primary reason was because of one of my best friends, Gus. Some of you guys already know him. Gus from Gus on the Go is a world traveler, and he has gone to almost every single country in the world. And Turkmenistan is one of the very, very last countries he has not been to yet. So we have been talking and this was supposed to be like a celebratory trip for him finishing his home stretch. And luckily, last year when I went to Equatorial Guinea, I met up with the people at Lupine Travel. My name is Aaron. I'm a tour leader for Lupine Travel. Lupine Travel is a UK-based tour company that uh, arranges various different tours to, as they say, unique destinations, difficult countries to travel to or difficult visa to arrange. We've been developing a lot of new tours. Whenever you book a tour, you will get an email with very specific details on what to expect during the tour and what to do. Then you come out to the country you booked a tour to and there will be a local guide there and a tour leader, which is, in this case, it has been me for yeah. Turkmenistan and Tomas will be there as representatives of the company to help you out, make your life pretty much easier. And the local guides will have all the knowledge and the know-how and they will arrange the buses, the transport, all the practical stuff. We go to difficult destinations, so, you know, it's uh, always good to have a few people on the ground. Yeah, there's also an Instagram and a Facebook page that you can follow. It's Lupine Travel. And so Gus and I both applied with Lupine to go to Turkmenistan. Now here's the thing, Turkmenistan is not exactly the easiest country to get into. They are known for having a complicated visa process. And the visa process is different depending on which country you're coming from, but for me, an American, even with Lupine helping me, it was still a little bit of a process. For one, you have to pay to get the application. You fill it out, obviously. And then for me, I had to write a letter explaining why I wanted to visit Turkmenistan. Now, I was honest with the letter. I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just really interested in your country. Yes, I have a YouTube channel. Yes, I've done a video on Turkmenistan. I think it's really cool. And after we waited a few months to finally hear back, I finally got my visa accepted. However, Gus was rejected. And it sucked because Gus was the reason why I was gonna do this trip. And uh, here's the thing, if you get accepted into Turkmenistan, you're not really in a position to say no to them. Cause this could be the only once in a lifetime opportunity to do it. They could reject and deny your visa for whatever reason at any time. And they don't have to explain anything to you. So with an accepted visa, it was a little awkward because it's like, I'm doing something Gus really wants to do and I'm supposed to do it with him, but uh, it's a little disappointing. But I talked to Gus and he gave me his blessings. He's like, Paul, you know, of course, I'm a little sad I can't come, but go. And here's the thing, a lot of you guys watched the Turkmenistan episode. And so you guys know that it's a very fascinating country. But anyway, um, Gus and for all my other subscribers watching, I hope this video can kind of help you and give you some ideas should you ever have the desire and ability to visit Turkmenistan. Let's go check it out.
made it to Turkmenistan, Ashgabat. Uh, the airport looks pretty cool. So, few side notes. If you get accepted for the visa, you actually don't get it until you arrive at the airport. You have to show your LOI or letter of invitation. From there, you have to pay for the visa and then they'll give it to you. Although Wi-Fi works, the entire country has banned access to every social media platform. The only things you can use are email and search engines like Chrome. Even VPNs are restricted and many people must go through a series of different VPN brands, mostly Russian based, in order to get access to social media sites. Second, I was stupid and I missed my first flight, so I had to reschedule and meet the group one day later. I missed out on a few activities like seeing some Ahal Teke horses, the secret hidden Kolv Ata cave lake, and the famous Ram Cemetery of Nohur in the middle of the mountains, which is where I would meet them. You know how when you see those pictures of Turkmenistan, it's like, it's a desert, it's hot, it's a warm place. It is f***ing cold here. Two side notes, everywhere you go, like 80% of the buildings in this country have green rooftops, whether it's in the city or in the countryside. They love the color green here. And second, you will notice two repeating images everywhere you go in the country. The eight-pointed star of Oguz Khan, the father of the Oguz Turks, and the five Gül symbols, or the patterns used to symbolize the five main tribes of Turkmenistan as depicted on the flag. These national symbols are found everywhere, in buildings, on street signs, the bank notes. What it comes down to is Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan really wants you to know that they are Turkmenistan. So I met my group, made of some really cool people from many countries. We had some Turkmen breakfast, which included domestic brand soft drinks. And then it was time to hit the road. We made it. Hotel Nebichi. Turkmenistani TV. Turkmen Ovazi. Look at them performing. This is the heaviest key I've ever had. So Hotel Nabichi was great. We spent the night in Balkanabat in the Balkan region. It's important to note that although you are allowed to walk around freely and explore, no, you are not monitored the whole time. If you are a foreigner, you do need a permit if you decide to cross over into a different region in Turkmenistan. Now, why were we in the Balkan region? Well, because we're about to see one of the most difficult to access and beautiful sites in all of Turkmenistan that nobody talks about. <laughs> In Turkmenistan, most people go to the Darvaza gas crater, and that's cool and all. We will do that. But today, this was in my video. I've seen the pictures. It's really cool. I wish I could have a drone because it's so beautiful. Not many people get to see this, and I'm super excited. So we're here today with our driver, Ruslan. My travel buddies today are going to be Tommy Boy. And we also got Mr. Jules, which I call Tintin because he's Belgian. And we also got Mr. UK, Mike. So in Turkmenistan, there is only one state-owned petrol company. Turkmen a bit. Turkmen a bit. This is the great Balkan mountain system. Oh my goodness, we are in the middle of nowhere. Look at all this. The scenery is amazing. We saw camels just on the side of the road. This is the beginning of the Yangikala Canyon area. Super excited to go see this place. And I need my mic because it is super windy. So welcome to Goshoba. And this is the happening spot. The local convenience store. There's a baby at the counter. Look at that. The baby's managing to register. The baby is in charge. <laughs> oh my god, guys, this is so cool. That's the national dog, the alibi. Oh, I get to see one in person. Look at that. That's so cool. Alibi. Hey, alibi. Oh, he's letting me pet him. <laughs>
So this is Yangikala Canyon. It is one of the most unique canyons on earth that very few people get to visit. Why is it unique? Because unlike most canyons that were formed by rivers, this whole thing used to be underwater. In fact, the whole Caspian Sea used to be the Tessus Ocean. So actually, this canyon is just the exposed sediments underneath what used to be underwater. It's not a river canyon. It's an entire ocean canyon. And uh, not a lot of people get to see this outside of Turkmenistan, even in Turkmenistan. It's so hard to get here. This is quite the treat. I just stepped away from the group and you don't understand how incredibly silent it is here. There's nothing, not even like a gust of wind, nothing. I feel like I, I can hear my own thoughts. It's ugh, it's a little weird, but there's no tourists, nobody, just just us. That's the famous ridge. If you look up Yangikala Canyon, this is like the only thing that shows up in pictures on Google. I found, I'm here. I'm, I am at the Google Images place. So I was informed that the famous ridge that you see in the Google images does not have a name. So uh, Turkmenistan government, I implore you, give it a name, please. Give it a name. What is, what, what, what should we call this? You know what? Until you give it a name, I'm gonna call it Gala Ridge. Cause like Yankee Gala, Gala Ridge. I'm gonna call it that. So tonight we're gonna crash in Turkmenbashi, the largest coastal town of Turkmenistan. And uh, I like to do a little something every time I come to a new country. One thing I love doing when I go to a new country, I like to check out the grocery stores. Here's one. So in the US, a whole jar of caviar like this would cost, I don't even know, I've seen it go over a hundred dollars here. It's 35 manat. That's like $2. Okay, to be fair, it was a Russian brand called Baltiski Birik, which means Baltic Coast, and I'm not even sure if the Baltic Coast has a caviar industry. It could have been fake. I don't know, but whatever. It tasted like real caviar, and shut up. All right, we are at the Turkmenbashi International Airport. It's newly built. We're going to fly a domestic flight from Turkmenbashi to Ashgabat. So today we're gonna fly the flagship domestic airline, Turkmenistan Airlines. It's not a very, uh, not a very common airline for people to fly. Uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see what this airline's gonna be like. I will never forget the capital Ashgabat. It has the highest concentration of white marble buildings in the world and everything is clean and pristine. They actually hire laborers to work during the nighttime while everybody's sleeping to clean and trim up the entire city. And like I said, they really want you to know this is Turkmenistan. This is the Independence Monument. I've seen pictures of this. This was in my video. They built this huge monument that's kind of supposed to be in the shape of a yurt to symbolize their nomadic roots, statues of all the heroes of Turkmen peoples. Ah, it's so cool to see this. This was in my video. This is the Ruhnama. It was written by Turkmenbashi, aka Niyazov. This was such an iconic part of the country for the longest time. He wrote this book and everybody pretty much had to learn it at a young age and it was required for things like getting a driver's license or graduating schools and universities. <laughs> I've, I've wanted to see this for so long. Yay. So uh, I'm watching the Turkmenistan episode while in Turkmenistan. <laughs> so this was just just gonna be a quick stop over in Ashgabat. We got our 10 minat, AKA 60 cent vodka shots and called it a night because tomorrow we're gonna do the big thing that everybody does when they come to Turkmenistan. <laughs> Turkmen grocery stores are the best. She's got everything. Mm. Interesting. So I guess uh, they sell ice cream with the brand sticker on the ice cream. I'm getting this. 
Whoa! God, this is good. What is this? This is actually really good. What is it? It's called Gosley. I love how they're just like, we don't have time for packaging. We'll just put the sticker on the ice cream. Our last little pit stop in this small little Turkmen village. And then we're off to Darvaza Crater. alibi dog just coming up to me oh these guys are the best oh my god you want to okay you want to join me with the crater okay this is so turkmen right now i got an alibi dog next to the crater <laughs> this is the most turkmen thing you can do right now oh my god i love this dog i don't even know where he came from he just came up to me this is so crazy shortly after that the dog disappeared and i never saw him again and this is it the gates to hell aka the darvaza crater Ooh, it's nice and warm it's super windy but the wind is warm and it's freezing outside so i like it the darvaza crater aka the gates to hell is one of if not the top site in turkmenistan and the whole thing was kind of an accident see back in the 70s during soviet times the russians were drilling for natural gas deposits and they came across this site it collapsed under pressure and to deal with it they figured they would ignite the crater to prevent poisonous gases from spreading and since then the crater has still been burning nearly 50 years later normally tour groups stay in tents however since the weather was super windy and chilly we were allowed to stay in a yurt camp nearby which i thought was actually better because it felt more like a turkmen experience this is so cool we get to stay in yurts tonight oh man can't get any more central asian than that oh yurt time <laughs> it's time to learn geography now in all its majestic, glowy, fiery beauty. Gus, I'm so sorry. I really wish you were here. I'm so sorry, man. One thing I absolutely love about Turkmenistan, the meat pies. Oh my goodness, if you come here, you gotta try them. You can't go wrong with that. So today we're gonna drive out of the city and have a little bit of a history lesson. And Turkmenistan has thousands of years under its belt. Okay, so this right behind me, this is crazy. This is old Nisa. It's only about 20 kilometers away from Ashgabat, really easy to get here. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you too much with history, but basically in ancient times, there were three main Persian empires, the Achaemenids, the Parthians, and the Sassanids. This is the former capital of the Parthian Empire, and uh, it's over 2,000 years old. And for the longest time, due to the fact that they were under the Iron Curtain, Turkmenistan's government didn't allow any outsiders to come in to research and study this place. Archaeologists weren't allowed, but then finally they opened up, and in 2009, this place was inscribed in UNESCO. It's a world heritage site and it rightfully deserves to be so. All around the entire perimeter of the fortress you can find 43 watchtowers which have now pretty much eroded into small little grassy hills as time and weather conditions have kind of eroded them but you can still see them they're kind of like small little lumps and the coolest thing is you can see the snow-capped mountains right behind this entire thing and the crazy thing is this place doesn't have a lot of crazy annoying tourists it's like we have the whole place to ourselves I can run around these tunnels and nobody will bother me Oh my god, seriously, I can just run around this whole thing by myself and there's nobody here to bother me. I have a whole 2,000-year-old fortress all to myself. 
So with that, it was time to say goodbye to old Nisa in all its glory, and fast forward a few more centuries to the Sasanian Empire, and to the next spot, about 130 kilometers from Ashgabat, Abivert. So this right here is Abivert. It is one of the oldest sites you can find in Turkmenistan. It was basically a trading post upon the Silk Road. All these buildings have been destroyed by the Mongols. It happened in the 13th century. Just be very careful. They're all made out of mud, so it's kind of easy to chip away. Don't destroy the buildings. Oh, so many of them just all over. You could see them everywhere, and every so often, if you're lucky, you can find a nice blue ceramic tile or shard. You can even you can even find the shards on the ground, but you can walk around, check it out, only in Turkmenistan. <laughs> oh, we found a little turtle, a little tortoise, desert tortoise. Come on, don't be scared. I'm gonna name you Henry. Henry the tortoise. Do, 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 do. What have we here? We're in desert tortoise. Come on, Henry. I'm gonna put you in the shade so that you're not in the boiling hot sun. Put you next to some plants so maybe you can eat them or eat some bugs. There you go, Henry. Hope you're more comfortable. <laughs> They say one of the best times to visit Turkmenistan is during a national holiday or festival. And luckily, we came here during one of the largest ones. And to see it, we had to drive to the outskirts of Ashgabat to Noruz Yailasi, or Noruz Pasture. There is almost no better time to experience Turkmenistan than during Noruz, which is Persian New Year. And it actually started in what is now Iran, which is actually right behind those mountains over there. It is a tradition that goes back over 3,000 years, celebrated throughout all of Central Asia, going amongst all peoples of all different faith bases, from Zoroastrian to even Muslims. It's a cool thing to see, and there's a car coming behind me, so I gotta get it out of the way. Whoa. Oh, so much is going on. You got yurts, you got the swings, you got camels, and we're so lucky we get to experience this. <laughs> the boys are at it. I guess you can just go inside these yurts if they're empty and uh, hang out and chill. Afterwards, we went back to Ashgabat and I was surprised because I got in contact with one of my actual Turkmen subscribers, Aylar. Meeting her was really cool because despite the internet restrictions, I still have a small community of Turkmen subscribers that know who I am and want to meet me. I asked her if she was okay with being on camera. She said yes, which was great because it's not every day you get to talk to, let alone meet, a real live Turkmen. They're kind of rare. I mean, if anything, I was starstruck by her. Say hi to Aya, my Turkmen subscriber that I met in Ashgabat. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions. Questions. Number one question, what is a Turkmen? Uh, first of all, a normal human being and a person with strong values such as family values, friendship, community. Uh, I'm a Teke, Yomut and Chodur. Oh, three, three. Three tribes. I'm from Dashogos, by the way. What do you want the world to know about Turkmenistan? The very important thing I want the entire world to know is that Turkmenistan is not a strange country. It's a normal country with its own certain rules that can be different from the entire world. And for some people it might be weird, but it's not strange. If people want to visit Turkmenistan, what yeah. do you recommend they do and see? Connect with locals. Yes. This is important because you may have a wrong impression if you just come and visit with a tour guide. I understand rules might be strict, but if you met one, don't lose that person. That it's a very rare person. <laughs> So fun fact, in Turkmenistan, they still have pay phones. <laughs> Let's check it out. Look at that. Just, uh, you know, you can pay up there and you can get your phone. So we had a free day to just kind of explore on our own without following anything that Lupine Travel had planned for us. So transportation in Turkmenistan is heavily car dependent. And fun fact, virtually any car on the street can potentially be a taxi. A typical negotiated fare within the city can go anywhere from about $1 to $1.50. However, we discovered an even cheaper way to get around. So we were considering taking a taxi, but instead uh, we figured out uh, how to take the bus. And it's only half a manat. Oh my God, how much is that? Like three cents? <laughs> it's like just to take the bus. And here's a here's one manat. It's half of this. All right, we are on an Ashgabat bus. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna go to the Tales of Turkmenbashi theme park. Yes, there is a amusement park in the middle of Ashgabat. You just walk in, and uh, I guess you get your ride tickets at the ticket office right there. Thank you. Yeah. So you get your little tickets and then you can ride. Each ride is four manats. They give you these little manat tickets. And uh, we're going to start off with this big guy. We're going to get in this one. <laughs>
We're in Ashgabat. In the middle of the marble buildings as well. In the middle of the marble buildings, doing a log flume ride. If I see a roller coaster, I have to do it. We're doing this. I don't know how you feel. Good. Good. Excited. Excited. You, you realize this ride was made in the Netherlands, In the Netherlands, right? yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about it going on I a Dutch it. ride? I <laughs> Our Belgian hate hates it. No, very trustworthy. <laughs> they were gonna make us go twice. So everybody unlatched their seatbelt and they're like, nope, round two. And we're like, oh shoot. <laughs> Who is this lovely woman? <laughs> okay, it is our last day. And what better way to end off than by going to the circus. Yeah, let's check out some Turkmen circus performers. Now, I really like this. However, full disclosure, the circus does have animal performers, mostly featuring the national animals, the Akhal Teke horse, camels, and alibi dogs. However, if animal performers is not your thing, just keep this in mind. Oh my goodness, the show hasn't even started yet, and already they're giving away horse rides. Akhal Teke horse. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what to expect, but this is going to be cool. It's so crazy, like, I'm living out my research. This was in my video. I get to see the things that I've researched. For 10 years, I get to see the things that I've only read about, that I've only seen in research. This is real life. That's a real fire. It's been going on for decades. I'm feeling the heat from the, from the flames hitting me and it's nice and I like it and it's warm and I'm here in Turkmenistan and it's crazy. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I get to do stuff like this. It just happens. Life just kind of happens and I don't know. This is what I want. This is what makes me happy. Take, take your riches. I'll take the world. Ha, ha, ha.